This video is going to talk about using VoiceThread to lecture capture. So I've created a content area. If you have an existing area, you can use one of those. You'll look for the Tools tab and scroll down and select VoiceThread. So the first thing that we're doing here is creating the link inside of Blackboard to the VoiceThread tool. So for this example, let's just say I'm going to, um, I'm going to lecture over Chapter 1. And we're going to talk about ethos, logos, pathos, and kairos. Um, you don't have to put a lot there because that's what your voice threads for. So it's just going to be your general overview. Um, we're not going to make this um, a graded assignment because it's for a lecture. So we're going to leave it no. Although you could, um, you could record your lecture. And if you enable the evaluation, that would allow them to, or you could require them to ask questions. Finally, we want to make sure that we permit them to see it. And if you want to, you can track the number of views so you can see how many times students access that voice thread. So our voice thread link is in Blackboard now. Uh, I'll click there. And depending on your internet connection, it may just take a second for that page to kind of load up with voice thread. So I, I just want to show an individual voice thread. I have some that I've already created. Let's just go through the process of creating one um, as though we were going to record a lecture. So I'm going to click create new voice thread. Here I can search for a PowerPoint. Let's see. Um, should have one of those pretty close. Here we go. We'll use this. And so while the PowerPoint's uploading, you can name your voice thread. So chapter one, lecture. You can give it a description or insert tags. The next tab over is uh, playback options. If you don't want to allow commenting on your lecture, that's fine. You can disable it. Or you could also just limit, li excuse me, limit what type of comment they can insert. So that might be a microphone, or that might be audio, video, or text. And you can also save these settings as your default. Click Save at the bottom. We see that the PowerPoint's uploading. If we had um, a video file, so let's say I recorded a demonstration that I want to talk about, I could import that here in this space. I can also find YouTube videos. So let's use Let's just grab a quick video from YouTube. So I copy the link back in VoiceThread. Let's see. There we go. Uh, so our PowerPoint's processing. I want to add that YouTube link that's part of my lecture. Uh, add media, URL. You can paste that in. It'll import that, so that'll be one of the things that um, as they progress through your lecture they can watch. So we've got our stuff uh, loading <clears throat> while we're doing that. Uh, if you ever need to, when you click edit on a voice thread, this is the page that you'll get. Add Media will always let you add new content. Um, once things are loaded, you can edit uh, information or edit the title of a slide, or you can delete it if you want to replace it. Comments: How we're going to actually record our lecture and share with class is what we want to use after we've kind of got it as close to ready as possible. Um, so we see that those PowerPoint slides are loading in. And we've got um, the video here from YouTube and another one I've added. Um, let's say that I want to cover all of this in my lecture. So I've got my materials loaded. I want to click the comment button. It's going to take me, um, it should take us to the first slide. Got an old comment there. So um, once you get to this page, you're ready to go. As long as you've got a microphone, uh, if you don't have an, a microphone built into your computer or an external one in your webcam or just a mic, 
You can also use the earbuds that come with a, uh, a smartphone. Obviously, some of the micro USBs and things like that aren't compatible. But if you've got a set of those old uh, earbuds with the, the you know the copper jack, those will work great with a computer. Cause it's going to put the mic uh, closer to your face. Anyway, so this button right here is the comment button. We've talked about that. When you're ready to lecture over your slides, um, you can do audio or video. And it's kind of your choice from here. You can go to each slide and insert a comment. Or you can start a recording on the first one, go through several slides, and then stop. Um, especially if you're just trying to cover a concept that crosses multiple slides. Um, or you can go slide to slide and insert a comment. So what, what that looks like, let's say we wanted to do an audio recording. I've clicked the audio mic, we hit countdown. We're on our first slide. Um, once you start recording, whether it's audio or video, you get the option to draw on the slides. You get a nice little rainbow pack here. <clears throat> and you can point out things that are really interesting or if you were doing a live session, maybe you t did an article review, you could circle a section that you wanted them to kind of really talk about. Um, so that's all I want to do in the first slide for this lecture. I'll go to the second slide. I'm still talking and I'm uh, circling things I want to point out. We're going to keep going. And let's say this is the end of, of this section. I click stop recording. It's going to give me an opportunity to preview um, the recording. <clears throat> so what we should see... I've turned off my volume so there's no feedback, but what we should see is that, um, I'm just, yeah, there we go. We, I'm, I'm gonna start drawing on the slides and we'll see that I'm gonna move to the next couple. So you can record that way. <clears throat> when you're comfortable with your comment, you click save or you can add to it. Um, I'll, I'll save that comment. So it inserts it at the very beginning and it'll play across those uh, slides. So let's say you get to the point where you feel like you've recorded your entire lecture. We feel good about it. We click the X in the top right corner. And then we're going to click this blue share with class button. Uh, it's going to give you the option to return to the class. It gives you this kind of dead page. So what you can do is use the breadcrumbs at the top and click that content area. Mine was called VoiceThread. So we'll see that it's here. <clears throat> and if we want to test that this works for students, uh, we have the student preview button. So I'll click that. That puts us in the course as a student. And then it'll just take a second for it to load. It should take them straight into that first slide. <clears throat>